So those are some good and bad examples of some things that we've mentioned so far in this video, and we're going to talk about now social media. So let's talk about Twitter first, because that's probably one of the biggest ones. You can post whatever you want on your Twitter. You can post announcements for your game. You can post production, behind the scenes stuff. You can retweet fan art. You can reply to other visual novel accounts. You can do all these kind of things. Just make sure it stays on brand. So if you're a visual novel promoting a friendly, fun environment, try not to just start tweeting about politics. It's very awkward and will turn a lot of people off because it is not at all the kind of environment you've established with your Twitter page at that time and the brand overall of your project. Like, like we've said before, with the brand, when they think of the name of your company or your product, you want them to feel the perception that you're trying to go for. So if you're a fun, friendly dating sim that's coming out next week, you want to make sure your Twitter page is a fun, friendly environment full of nice, wholesome tweets and maybe some silly little memes that are related. Related. It's, it, it really depends on the kind of brand that you've already established and the kind of ways that you're going with it. Now, another important thing, hashtags. They don't work on Twitter. So there's been studies done in the past that show Twitter hashtags just don't work. And there's a few reasons for it. And for the most part, this is just because of the fact that more than half of the accounts that use hashtags are questionable. Like they're, they're bots or they're doing some weird follow for follow stuff or their like or retweet sharing with big collections of people that are just looking for engagements for the sake of engagements. It's a lot of really sketchy stuff. And a lot of other times people just don't like any posts with hashtags in them because it really feels like you're just there for impressions and nothing else at that point. I get like that sometimes whenever I look at a hashtag because you can just kind of feel like they're just saying, hey, I put a hashtag on there because I'm, I'm looking for other eyes to look at my stuff and give me some likes. So typically speaking, hashtags just don't really work anywhere except for really Instagram. And Instagram isn't exactly the best place for you to promote visual novels anyways. But even besides that, you don't even really need hashtags. And here's an example of that. This is a tweet of me a week ago that just saw Papa John was trending on my, on, right here on the side, I saw Papa John is trending. So I said to myself, oh no, the day of reckoning, cause that was a meme recently about how he ate like 30 pizzas in a month or something like that. And he was saying the day of reckoning is coming soon. So that was a whole meme. So I posted, oh God, the day of reckoning is here. I posted that thinking it would get like maybe five or eight likes or whatever, because that's usually what my kind of post will get. And I come back and I see it jumped up to like 500 likes about. And I'm thinking, what, wait, what? And then I realize, oh, wait, I just directly tweeted about a trending tab. That's exactly how that works. And I didn't have to use a hashtag though for that to happen. I didn't have to use a hashtag at all and people found this tweet and liked it. So you don't need to use hashtags for people to find you by searching the kind of stuff that you're looking for. If you're making a visual novel, you don't have to end all your posts with hashtag visual novel. You can just write the words visual novel in there and anybody searching visual novel will see your posts. They will just see. You don't have to have it as a hashtag. You can just write the words and it will show up. And now I'm learning about all these other games that are showing up here. You don't have to bother with hashtags and you don't have to try to only tweet about trending stuff. If you have a game project that you want people to find by searching certain terms, you don't have to make it a hashtag. You can just literally make it the words. So instead of worrying about hashtags and the, the best terms to use and stuff like that, Focus more instead on your elevator pitch, which is the very quick pitch for when you're in an elevator with someone, how you would promote your game to them. Here's an example right here. This is my Yuri visual novel, The Paracel Festival Bittersweet Blossom. It's a coming of age story about a young gay merchant. You want it because it's fantasy Yuri and you get goofy magic items and the entire thing was hand painted in watercolors by this person here. So this is literally, we just found while looking up visual novel, this person giving their elevator pitch of their game to somebody else onto here. So now by just searching this visual novel term, I've already been pitched a game. And if this is something that interests me, now I can click on their page and check it out more. That is exactly what you should focus on more. And pay attention again, there's absolutely no hashtags in here. None. 
there is only the term visual novel in here, and they made sure to put Yuri in there as well, Yuri visual novel, right here, just like that, so that anybody who's searching Yuri visual novel will see this. This is a very good post. And this is them just replying to somebody else, replying to them, I think. Yeah, they posted a tweet of a randomly generated customer for their game, I believe. And then somebody asked, what is this and why do I want it? And this was the perfect time, the perfect opportunity for them not only to do their elevator pitch to this person, literally to anybody searching the term visual novel or Yuri, they're going to get this elevator pitch as well. That is why... This post has 16 likes and 9 retweets compared to the original post, which is 2 retweets and 10 likes. Do you know why? More of the people are searching for these terms in here than they are for any of the terms in this tweet. Alright, next we're going to talk about Reddit and Discord communities, because these are their own kind of things, because you're joining a whole community instead of just promoting your own stuff. This is where you're going to meet some new people, you're going to make some connections, you're going to learn some things, you're going to share some things, and you're going to do so very, very carefully, okay? You are not here to join these communities just to shout out your game the entire time, okay? That is very inappropriate a lot of the times, and in most cases will get you banned. So, a lot of these places will have exact rules and exact places for when and how you can promote yourself. So, you'll get posts like this one, where they've been posting a visual novel they've been working on for three years and showing off the demo and stuff. This person has probably been involved with visual novel communities and the communities that they're trying to target with their games for a while. Let's, let's take a look, actually. So, they've been posting in Otome games, visual novels... They've been posting in places like Indie Gaming. They've been posting in all these communities for a while. Not just promoting their stuff, but talking with people about their projects as well. And talking about all these things. They aren't just in these communities to promote themselves. They are there to make connections, to learn things, to share and to grow together as a community because that's what we all are in subreddits in Discord servers. We're a community. This is the r slash visual novel subreddit. They also have a Discord and you can see here they'll have specific channels. Maybe you're a developer yourself and you want to talk to some devs about your progress and shout out some Discords. You can do that in here, it looks like. Maybe you want to learn new things like Japanese or you want to share music with them. This is not just a place where everybody is just shouting their games into the void and hoping literally everybody in the server checks it out. This is a place where you're growing together and learning together and having fun and having this appreciation for visual novels. So you have to keep in mind, do not just shout yourself out out of nowhere. Do not think, I'm just going to join this community and say, hey, check out my shit. I'm the hottest new dev on the block. That's a great way for them to tell you to go home. So join some communities, make some connections, keep in mind appropriate times to shout yourself out, usually towards the completion of your game. If you made quite a mark in this community and you've been recognized by a few of them already, it's probably safe to say you're good to post about your game at that point somewhere. Just make sure you're putting it in the appropriate place and you're not just interrupting somebody talking about their day and saying, oh, that's cool. Check out my game. Yeah, it's almost done. Check it out. Check it out. Like you got to keep all of this in mind. Be careful with it because if you give off the wrong impression, a lot of people are gonna feel weird. And at a certain point, you're gonna wanna make your own communities. This is my Discord here. It's not as active as I'd like it to be, but it's got enough people in it that will talk regularly to the point where I don't have to talk myself to literally everybody. It's my server, it's all about my content, but I don't have to be the person talking to literally everybody. Some people are coming in to post about their PC being broke and how they fixed it. And then we got other people like Zweezy saying, awesome, what was the problem? You know, they're engaging in conversation, not even involving me at all, not even about me at all, in my server about me. And that's good because this is forming a community. This isn't just supposed to be some place where I shout myself out every single day, 24 seven. This is supposed to be a place where we all hang out and we meet each other and we have fun and we share stuff together. This isn't just supposed to be, hey, look, check out my content, check out my content, check out my content, check out my content. Like you don't want your communities to be just that. It's great if you get a community that's really excited for any of your content that comes up, but you also want this to just be a place where they want to go and hang out in all the time. The goal would be to have a server that's really active to the point where a lot of people that are regulars will just chill in like the general chat and just talk to each other and it doesn't even have to be related to you at all. All right, so now we're going to talk about YouTube, which is kind of its own thing entirely to market, but 
it can help you a lot with discovery for your game if you do it properly. A lot of developers will just use YouTube as a trailer dumping ground. That's not the best thing to do to actually get discovered. Because unless you're already a huge, huge product, nobody's just going to be searching for your title here trailer and finding it instantly. And if they're searching visual novel trailer, a lot of the time, you're not going to be the first result at all. So you need to keep that in mind when you're creating content for the YouTube channel and trying to use it for discovery. This can be a great, great thing to grow your fan base and get more people interested in your project if you do it right. So how do you do it right? Well, you know people that already know about your game are going to be able to find it, but how are you going to get new people to check it out? Well, you want to do general content. If you're doing more general content on your YouTube channel, way more people are likely to find it. it nobody's really going to be going out to search devlog of X game here. They're not going to be doing that. Now, if instead you titled your devlog how to create a cheerful vibe in your visual novel and you do it from the lens of this is what I accomplished this week with editing my visual novel to get the feel going with the music and the, the right CGs at the right time, that is a much more discoverable video than just trailer of title here. Because now, one, you're helping other people by providing them with the helpful advice from your video or the helpful stuff that you've learned from your first-hand experience. And two, now you're doing it by showing them your game. You're showing them the project. And maybe if they're watching you work on the project, they might think, hey, this actually looks like a pretty interesting project. Or because they're searching for creating a cheerful vibe, maybe they're into games that also provide cheerful vibes. You can keep your target audience for your general visual novel project in mind when you're making YouTube content, and that will help you a ton. Now let's talk about some other ways you can market your game. These aren't exactly social media, but I kind of consider them to be Kickstarter. Not only is it a great way to raise funds for your game, it's also a great way to generate hype. We've seen time and time again, projects that have gotten huge just by having a Kickstarter because some people have found out, hey, this project that interests me needs some more money for the project to get funded. Maybe I will try to promote it to some of my other friends so that we can really hope to get the money for it. Not only have they put their money towards it already, they're invested in it being developed because they feel like they're a part of making it. Kickstarter can be a great great, great thing if you can make it successful. Now there's a lot of planning that you have to do with Kickstarters, specifically with the tiers. You have to plan them out properly, especially if you're doing any physical goods like keychains or stickers or posters and stuff, because they can be also great for marketing as well, while you're also making some money to fund your game. But you gotta make sure you keep in mind the costs of making them and shipping them. If you need to cut out money in the budget for it, make sure you account for that. But it could very much benefit you, even if you end up losing some money making the physical goods, it could help you a lot. And then obviously you'll want to give a free copy of your game after a certain tier. That's just a no-brainer. Usually you can make this the price that you were going to charge the game anyways. So they've basically pre-ordered your game and you can develop the game with it. This is a nice little freebie because usually, unless you're doing a physical release, it costs you nothing to generate a code for the game. So Kickstarter is an amazing way to both fund your project and promote hype for the game. Another place that's very similar to that is Patreon. Patreon, you can do stuff like a lot of behind the scenes posts all the time. You can have paid content, maybe paid art commissions if you want some fans to give them suggestions for like sketches and stuff. And that's like a nice little way to get people active in that little community. You could have an own little sub community for just patrons of your game or your studio. You also want to think long term with your Patreon because usually when the game is out, all the patrons leave. That's usually how it will go if they were only there to support that project. So you have to think of the long term for some of your posts on there if you want to keep your studio funded from that source. Now, this can be stuff like general content, kind of similar to YouTube. You can do instead of videos, you could do articles. Instead of titling it devlog number 32, you can title it how I learned to direct voice actors or something like that. There is a lot of stuff you could do to to keep people there on that Patreon if you show them it has value in itself. Obviously, it's a lot of work you're gonna have to do to keep it going, but it is one of the direct ways you're going to stay funded during production. So it's very important that you stay on top of it. And lastly, you can have your own website. Now, this is something that you don't necessarily need, but it can help a lot because it shows your project is serious, but only if you take it seriously. Don't half-ass it. It costs you money after all to host it. You have to pay per year for a domain name and you have to pay every month 
for a server. So depending on how much it costs and how much you have to keep that website up, that could dictate how long your game can sell. If you only have enough money to keep that website up for three months after the game comes out, and it's the only place where you've actually talked about the game a lot, then once that website goes down, then how are people supposed to find your stuff? Now, now that we've talked about social medias and websites and Patreons, Kickstarts, now let's go back to some examples, but this time we're going to look at some websites and some social media posts and stuff like that. Let's start with Lou Game. So Lou Game has been really on point with their marketing from what I've been noticing on Twitter. Their game came out six months ago and they're still making cost of posts on here. In fairness, it's mostly because they released the free DLC recently. They also post some really great marketing content on here and know their branding environment that they got going on. So we got stuff like these nice little meme fan arts of the girls. Here's one where they retweeted somebody who has a mat of art from the game. This is awesome. Look at this right here, okay? Somebody out there has this and then tweeted this out, posted this. They've not only bought and enjoyed the game themselves, they have now posted a picture on Twitter where other people are gonna see this mat and see this at for Lou game, and they're probably gonna check it out. They're gonna think, hey, this is a nice little, this is great anime art. This is really, really cool. Where can I go and see that? And then they're gonna click here, and then they're gonna see it. So now, this is really, really good. So so you get stuff like, uh, stuff like these posts. I remember this post when I have, this is a good one. <laughs> And, and you got like some nice little wholesome memes because again, they've made this environment on their social media and in their marketing products where it's a nice, friendly, fun visual novel experience. So you'll have these nice little wholesome funny memes that are going on. This is the kind of stuff they can post because they've used their branding to give their voice the proper tone and stick with it. Look, look at this. Remember when I talked about how you can make literally any announcement have its own graphic? This is a perfect example of that. Lou Game Steam trading cards are here. Now, instead of just tweeting that, they also made a graphic where it looks like she's holding the trading cards. That's a very easy thing to do because this is already a CG that was already made. You got the Steam Store background behind her too. This is all very easy to make, but it helps a ton with getting impressions. You will get a lot more interactions than you ever will by just making a text post. See, we got some more really great meme posts here. <laughs> this is this is so good. They'll post some of these meme -y contents of their game that's nice and wholesome, and then they'll post some other art of the game, and it's really, really good stuff. This is exactly how you're supposed to do it. This is how you do it. This is how you keep people interested in the game. This is months after the game came out. This is them doing holiday marketing for it. They're doing Halloween marketing for it. When it already came out in the summer, that's how you do it. You don't just abandon it after it comes out. You keep it going. That's exactly it. This is exactly what you should do. Now, instead, we're going to take a look at Aloe and Cal. Now, keep in mind, this is a one-person dev self-funding it themselves. So, to be fair, they don't—they probably don't have a lot of money to work on with this. But let's let's take a look here. So, we don't have a lot going on here, which is already all right. That's fine. We got a website, which is another thing we're going to talk about. But let's talk about this here first, okay? We have 105 tweets. The last post in here was when it came out two weeks ago, just saying that it's out now and posting the link to it and then doing the hashtags, which, like we said, they don't work. But also, to be fair, Lou Game did use hashtags, but one of the main hashtags that they use a lot is the hashtag for their own game, which is probably fine. Because it's just anybody who wants to post about that game itself can do the hashtag for... It's not like a general hashtag. It's not somebody doing hashtag visual novel and hoping they get impressions. This is them saying, hey, if you want the devs or if you're a fan of the community to see some of your posts, put a hashtag Lou game on there. It feels a little different to me. You don't exactly need it, though. Again, if you just type Lou game instead of hashtag Lou game, usually people will see it anyways. But you can still do it. And it's not going to kill your tweet, but... A lot of the time, people are going to get turned away by the fact that there is hashtags, especially if they're very general ones, like hashtag vision novel, hashtag game dev, hashtag VN dev. So, okay, they made their latest post when the game came out, and then they posted two weeks before that saying that it's going to be released soon. That was probably when the page was first posted. And then a month beforehand was their update post with the demo and saying that it was 99% finished. Here, we have some... 
Oh, that's a link to the itch.io page. Okay. All right. So he's talking about the update more and posting some of the CGs there that they have set up. Okay, cool. That was a month before the last post. May. May of uh, just a link to a page saying he's still working. Okay. By the way, links are not the best to, to post if you want to actually get some tw impressions on Twitter, I've learned. The best way I found to do it is you put, you attach a photo to it. You, you could put the link in it, but also just put a photo in by itself because in general, a lot of people will engage more if it's just a photo as well, and then there's a link inside of it, than they will that with just a link. In general, that's what I found. But especially don't just post a link and absolutely nothing else. I would definitely recommend always putting some kind of text with it. I would definitely recommend that. And this is December 2018. This is him saying the updates are sparse, but he promises he's working on it daily. Okay, that's all fine and good. He even included a little photo. So that's that's nice. This is him posting about how the demo went past 100 downloads. That's good. He's posting an image with some of the analytics. He's hyping it up. That's very good. Would it be cooler if it was like, say, uh, a CG and maybe one of them was talking about how they went up, surpassed 100 downloads or something like that? That's something that you could have done. But, you know, this isn't bad, too. It just could have been a little better. This is back in September 2017, but this is a really good post because it's a nice little animated thing of the character for the game. So that's that's pretty nice. But then after that, it's a lot of a lot of text posts only about it. Like again, a lot of people on Twitter, they're looking for media. They're not looking to read your life story on Twitter or read about everything about your game progress on Twitter. Like that's fine to do, but usually you want to have some graphics going on every now and then too. Even if you're literally posting photos of the game that have nothing to do with what you tweeted about, Usually that's way better than just posting about whatever. But okay, you, you get the point with this Twitter where it's not really doing the most that it could be doing. But now let's take a look at the website. Let's look at the website that they have here. Allo and Cal. So this is the front page. This is it. it the, the front page just has the link to the Steam page. This here, this should not just be a link. This should be a literal big like image button so instead of just being a link it could be a clickable image that looks really nice that redirects you to the steam page that could be really cool much better than just buy now on steam and there's that i mean this could be can be nice but for the most part the, the website gives you a feel that it's too template based i don't know now let's take a look at the news 2019 Alan Cow is officially released, December 2019. Alan Cow is 99% finished, updated demo, November 2019. Alan Cow story is finally finished, March 2018. We've already gone back a whole year now. Website launched, 5-15-2016. Do you see the giant gap in these posts here? Now, you don't have to focus a lot on your website, right? You can focus more on stuff like your Twitter and your Itch.io pages and your Steam pages and stuff like that. You can focus more on them. But if you're making news posts for your Twitters and your Itch.io's and stuff, there's no reason not to also post a copy of it on the news section of your website as well. There's really no reason not to. All it serves to do is help you out if somebody's trying to Google around for a term that happens to be in your website's text. And there's not a lot of things on the news section that visually pops, but I mean, I guess it's a news section. Here, this is very good because we start with this. This is a nice CG. Literally every page should start with a cool CG from the game. The guy has 100 CGs. Every single page should start with a cool CG. Even if the rest of it is this, it's just start with this. And this is supposed to be for the characters. Each of these sections should have the character next to it. Should have, it should even have, instead of the text just being on the page, it should be a part of the image. It should be a part of the image in its own stylized font, in its own colors that match with the character's color palettes. It should be that kind of thing going on. That would help this kind of page out a ton. Now features, we got the selling points of the game, that's all good. Again, like I've said before with their store page, it would benefit them a lot if some of these selling points were in actual graphics, that could help a lot. A link to the demo on the itch.io, that's fine. Press kits, I will give them benefits on that. 
including a actual press kit page with all the relevant info in case anybody wants to publish any kind of content on it. That's really, really good. What I'm curious about is if this person actually took the press kit that they made and actively went and seeked out journalist websites and stuff like that. I'm, I'm curious if he actually did because that's what he definitely should have been doing. It doesn't really cost you anything to do that, to just take your press kit and go to journalists and just email them and say, hey, would this be something your website is interested in publishing a story on? Uh, we're available for an interview if, if you're interested in that kind of thing. Really no reason not to do that. All the, the worst that can happen is just those websites don't respond to you, and that's really the worst that can happen. And that's really it. For the most part, this web page is very... There's, there's nothing really going on with it. There's, there's nothing too much. Like, yeah, it's tell me about your game, but not really in a way that makes me want to joke. Also, why is the trailer on here? I mean, you, you don't really have a trailer trailer, but you have that gameplay video. That should be on here. That should be on the front page, honestly. That should be on the front page, right there. That is a big thing. Because a lot of people don't want to just go to a website just to read. They also would like to watch the trailer if it's around and available. So this is the Steins Gate website. So I showed you the trailer for Steins Gate earlier. This is the actual website for Steins Gate specifically. This is vastly different than the last website we looked at. Look at this. You got the nice, really great cover art here. Very stylized. You got the UI menu here. All on brand. Nice little stylized art with info text the text is over the image but it feels like it's a part of the image that's really cool we got a little visual effect going on with this this is all really really visually pleasing we have this great great character section telling us all about all the characters giving us this great info next to the image this is how you're definitely supposed to do it you don't exactly need the little buttons and keep them all in one spot that's a nice thing to have though because it makes it very easier and uh visually pleasing to navigate the site and then here we have some images of the game and explain some core unique features about it and then here we have the actual trailer and opening movie if we want to watch it so this is a really great website. Again, you don't really have to have a website, but if you can have a website, it will benefit you a ton if you use it properly and can use it in a way that stays on brand and does anything it can to interest people more so than you'll be able to with the restrictions put in place by Steam. Because as you can see from this page, there's a whole bunch more interesting stuff you can do visually than you could ever do with the Steam store page assets. Look at literally all of the cool visual stuff that they were able to achieve. They've even made learning about the game interactive because you could click these little buttons that highlight and scroll through and see the visuals moving and clicking more buttons. This is a way cooler way better experience. So those are all the most important points I have for marketing your visual novel that I can think of, and just try to keep in mind the core concepts of marketing in general if you learn nothing else from this video. And that is to keep in mind a distinct narrative, that is, what makes your game unique, what's the hook for it, what are the themes that you're going for. If you're going to sum up your game in a few words, what are those words? That's that step. Find your brand and use that brand to establish some of the marketing materials you're going to use and the target audience you're going to go for. And once you have that brand established, make sure you 100% know the target audience you're going for and the places that they frequently go to and where you can market to them at and establish all the marketing materials you're going to use based on the branding so that you can tell the world your product exists. That, that last one there, tell the world your product exists. If you have any topics that you're interested in having me discuss, anything anime game related or visual novel related or game dev related, let me know in the comments and I will see if that's something that I could make a video of in the future. Hey there, Editor Borg here again. This was originally going to be one whole video, but when I was editing it, it turned out to be about an hour and a half long, so I decided to split into three videos. I hope you've learned a lot from this. I put a lot of work into making it and I learned quite a bit myself doing research for this. And I want to give a huge, huge shout out to my friend Kennedy. Her YouTube channel is Redbard. She has been a major help in making this because of her marketing expertise. I put a link to her stuff in the description below. Go check it out. She makes really great anime content. You won't regret it. Anyways, that's all for now. Make sure you subscribe and do the bell thing for the channel. However, that works with YouTube now. Do all the weird bell stuff and I will talk to you all later.